Okay, we're still looking at these three diagrams, the electrical circuit and the hydraulic system and then this building over here. And now we're going to think about the voltage. And remember that voltage relates to potential energy. First, look at the hydraulic system here. The pump pumps the water up to the top and when it's up higher it has more gravitational potential energy. So one little gallon of water, imagine one little chunk of water here, say it's one gallon or one liter, the unit doesn't matter, one little piece of water up top has more potential energy than it had down at the bottom. So the pump is supplying potential energy to the water and as the water falls down it loses that potential energy. So imagine the water going through the process of falling over here. It loses some of its potential energy in water wheel 1 and loses some more in water wheel 2 and it loses some more in water wheel 3. And depending on the heights it might lose different amounts of potential energy in different water wheels. We don't know exactly how much potential energy is lost at each wheel but we do know this. The total lost here plus here plus here has to equal the total energy given to it by the pump. Now think about the building and think about a similar concept. The people are given potential energy by the elevator and when they come down they lose that potential energy and they lose some of their potential energy but not all. Some of it going down the stairs and they lose some of it going down the ladder and they lose some of it sliding down the pole and we might not know exactly how much potential energy is lost in each place but we do know that the total potential energy lost in all three of those places has to be the same as the total potential energy given to the person by the elevator so for example let's uh, let's just suppose that someone gains a thousand joules of potential energy going from the bottom to the top well then the total energy lost in the stairs plus the ladder plus the pole has to equal 1000 joules. That 1000 joules might not be divided up evenly because these heights are different. Some are taller than others. But we know the total will have to be the same as whatever energy was given to a person being lifted up by the elevator. Now apply these same concepts to the circuit and this is the point. Electrically, potential energy corresponds to voltage. Voltage refers to the amount of energy that each charge carries. Voltage is electrical potential energy per charge instead of gravitational potential energy. So the battery sends charge out one end and those charges have a lot of energy and they lose some of that energy in resistor 1 and then they lose some more in resistor 2 and they lose some more in resistor 3. And these could be anything besides resistors. They could be light bulbs, they could be motors, they could be toasters, anything. But they're connected in series and some of the energy gets lost in each one of them. Now it doesn't necessarily divide evenly. We might not know exactly how much energy is lost in each resistor, but we know that the total energy lost in all three has to equal the energy provided by the battery. So if this was a 12 volt battery here, then we know that the voltage here, what we would call V1, and the voltage in this second resistor, what we would call V2, and the voltage in the third resistor, what we would call V3, that those three would have to add up to 12 volts. So we can write this concept into our notes too. For three resistors in series, we know that the voltages must add up to the total. And again, that concept should make sense. You can memorize this idea, and you should, but again, better than memorizing it would be to understand it. If you understand that resistors in series are connected a certain way, as we've looked at in the diagram, you should understand that the voltage, the total voltage, has to be the sum of all the other voltages. So V1 is V, the voltage provided by the battery in this case, has to equal V1 plus V2 plus V3. So this is what we have so far. For resistors in series, the current is the same. And the voltages add up. And what we'll see uh, in just a little bit is that in parallel, just the opposite is true. In parallel, the, the voltages are the same and the currents add up. And, and all of those facts you should understand based on the fundamental ideas that we've been talking about. But before we go on, I want to talk about Ohm's law for just a second. 
and we'll do a little derivation. Remember Ohm's law says that V equals IR. The voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. And we can apply Ohm's law to the entire circuit where V is the voltage provided by a battery. Let me just draw a little um, circuit over here. And I'll put three resistors in series here. And V is the voltage provided by the battery. And I is the current coming out of the battery. And then R is the total resistance. So this Ohm's law here applies to the whole circuit. That's the total voltage, the total current, and the total resistance. Now we also have three individual resistors. We're calling them R1, R2, and R3. And we can apply Ohm's law to any individual resistor. So for example, I could say V1 equals I1 times R1, where I1 is the current going through resistor 1, and of course that's the same as I, and V1 is the voltage there at resistor 1, and R1 is the resistance of resistor 1. And this will be true. Ohm's law can apply to the circuit as a whole or to any individual circuit element. So I could say V2 is I2 R2, or I could say V3 is I3 R3. Now with that in mind, we'll do a little simple derivation. This is going to seem almost trivial, but, um, but just watch, because it won't be trivial the next time we do it. Remember we said that the voltage in, in series, this voltage V, has to be the, the voltages there added up. So V has to be V1 plus V2 plus V3. Now, apply this concept to each of these. And I can say that IR is equal to I1R1 plus I2R2 plus I3R3. And then remember what we said about current when you're in series. The I1, the current going through I1, and I2, the current, current going through uh, resistor 2, and I3, the current going through resistor 3, all of those are the same, and they're the same as I. So if I divide both sides of this equation by I, all of these are going to cancel out. And we're left with this. R, the total resistance, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And write that down. That's a handy formula. That's the formula for the total resistance if you have more than one resistor in series. So this is true for resistors in series. That's a formula for the total resistance for resistors in series. Now that might strike you as kind of obvious. You might be thinking to yourself, yeah, if I have three resistors in series, the total resistance is going to be the resistance of all three of those added up. And if that strikes you as obvious, that's good. And um, this derivation, therefore, may strike you as unnecessary. But just keep it in mind, because when we do resistors in parallel, we'll do a similar, derivation, a similar derivation, and we'll get a result that's very different from that one. So just keep this one in mind for now. And fortunately, this one's really easy to remember. For resistors in series, the total resistance is simply the sum of the resistors.